Welcome to the August 26, 2011 issue of Inside Rensselaer, the video podcast about the people, programs, and events at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. The final mission of the NASA Space Shuttle Atlantis, launched July 8, 2011, had some very interesting passengers, thousands of bacteria. Cynthia Collins, assistant professor of chemical and biological engineering, led a series of experiments called Micro 2A that were aboard the shuttle during its final mission. She seeks to understand how microgravity changes the way potentially dangerous bacteria grows. In particular, this research will examine how they form difficult-to-kill colonies called biofilms. This has important implications for protecting astronauts while inside enclosed and difficult to clean spaces, such as the International Space Station or during extended space missions deeper into our solar system. The team sent up 16 devices called group activation packs, each containing eight vials of bacteria. A new center for flow physics and control, known as CEFPAC, has been established within the School of Engineering, led by Michael Amate, professor in the Department of Mechanical, Aerospace, and Nuclear Engineering. CEFPAC researchers are investigating flow physics, prediction models, and control schemes. This entails a combination of basic research aimed at developing and verifying theories for fluid dynamic behavior and the modeling and application of these theories towards controlling flows. The center builds from Amate's research into active and passive flow control techniques and their applications in aerodynamics and fluid mechanics. Amate said he is actively seeking additional funding opportunities and industrial partnerships. Researchers at Rensselaer have developed a new method to harvest energy from flowing water. This discovery aims to hasten the creation of self-powered microsensors for more accurate and cost-efficient oil exploration. Led by Professor Nikhil Karatkar, the researchers investigated how the flow of water over surfaces coated with the nanomaterial graphene could generate small amounts of electricity, sufficient to power tiny sensors that are introduced into water or other fluids and pumped down into a potential oil well. As the injected water moves through naturally occurring cracks and crevices deep in the earth, the devices detect the presence of hydrocarbons and can help uncover hidden pockets of oil and natural gas. Details of the study, titled Harvesting Energy from Water Flow Over Graphene, were published online by the journal Nano Letters. Engineering researchers are combining automation techniques from oil refining and other areas to help create a closed-loop artificial pancreas. The device will automatically monitor blood sugar levels and administer insulin to patients with type 1 diabetes and aims to remove much of the guesswork for those living with the chronic disease. For six years, Professor B. Wayne Beckett, a member of the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering, has been creating progressively more advanced computer control systems for a closed-looped artificial pancreas. His work, funded by the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and the National Institutes of Health, stands to benefit the 15,000 children and 15,000 adults who are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, also known as juvenile diabetes, every year in the United States. The artificial pancreas is currently undergoing clinical trials in cooperation with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. John Morris, director of the Astrophysics Division at NASA, has been appointed Associate Vice President for Research, Physical, and Engineering Sciences. Morris has been director of the Astrophysics Division at NASA since 2007, leading the world's largest space astrophysics program. He's had overall management responsibility for major research missions, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, Chandra X-ray Observatory, and the Spitzer Space Telescope. Morris will join Rensselaer on October 3rd. Over the summer, Rensselaer announced the hiring of three new deans. Mary Simone, Associate Dean for Research and Community Engagement and tenured full professor in the School of Music, Theater, and Dance at the University of Michigan, has been appointed Dean of the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. She'll join Rensselaer on October 1st. Lori Leshen, Deputy Associate Administrator of Exploration Systems for NASA, has been appointed Dean of the School of Science. Leshen brings experience as a leader, educator, researcher, and administrator to leadership of the school. She'll join Rensselaer on October 1st. And Thomas Begley, Dean of the Business School of University College Dublin, has been appointed Dean of the Lally School of Management and Technology. Begley served as Dean of the UCD Business School for more than five years. He joined Rensselaer on July 1st. 
The United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association has announced its winners of regional awards for the 2011 NCAA Division III Outdoor Track and Field season, and the Rensselaer head coach Colin Torrey has been recognized as the Atlantic Region Men's Coach of the Year, the second outdoor regional honor of his career. Torrey led the engineers' men to the Liberty League and the NYS CTC championships during the 2011 outdoor season, the third straight conference title and the eighth state title in program history. Rensselaer also finished 11th overall and first among all conference teams at the ECAC championships. 50 area middle school students cured the summer brain drain this year with a heavy dose of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fun at the ExxonMobil Bernard Harris Summer Science Camp hosted by Rensselaer. The hands-on program offered students an exciting way to beat the heat as they worked side-by-side -side with ExxonMobil engineers and Rensselaer scientists, conducting experiments, participating in highly interactive projects and demonstrations, attending classes and weekly excursions, and interacting with guest speakers. This is the fourth year that Rensselaer has had the honor of participating in this program. In Lee Sheldon's multiplayer classroom, each student is a player who starts the semester game with a zero points a level that corresponds to the letter grade F. With each move they make, the students rack up points and their grade goes up. And rather than fret about losing an A, as the semester progresses in Sheldon's classroom, grades only get better. According to Sheldon, this grading scheme is one example of the fresh perspective games offer in the classroom. A pioneer in applying game design to education and co-director of the Games and Simulations Arts and Sciences program, Sheldon describes the benefits to education in his new book, The Multiplayer Classroom, Designing Coursework as a Game, recently released by Cengage Learning. Zicheng Zhang, the J. Eric Johnson 22 Distinguished Professor of Science and the Director of the Center for Terahertz Research, has received the William Stryfer Scientific Achievement Award from the IEEE Photonics Society. The award honors Zhang for his exceptional contributions in the past 10 years to the field of lasers and electro-optics. The award is given for a single recent contribution to photonics that has greatly influenced the research community. Zhang was cited for the exceptional contribution of terahertz air photonics, especially free space coherent detection of ultra broadband terahertz waves. The incoming class of 2015 promises to be an exceptional group. With an increase in average SAT scores and nearly 63% of the students coming from the top 10% of their high school classes. This class comprises nearly 1,192 students, including a total of 120 transfer students from various institutions. The high achieving group also includes 380 women and diversity in the national and international profile of the student body. More than 11% of the class is comprised of underrepresented minority students. And that's it for this issue of Inside Rensselaer. For these stories and more, go to www.rpi.edu slash about slash inside. Thanks for listening.